Well, CrowdStrike has millions of dollars worth of federal and state government contracts, including with Defence. And according to Tender, the software company signed a three-year defence contract worth $1.5 million in 2022. It also has a contract with Future Fund Management Agency worth $450 thousand dollars. Well joining me live is Dr Malcolm Davis, Senior Analyst for the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Thank you very much for joining us. Now this outage is set to be the biggest IT outage in history. The ramifications here financially first of all are absolutely huge and it's going to be ongoing. We're hearing that it could be a long time until we hear more and everything's back to normal but what are your thoughts on the, the financial ramifications first of all? Well, look, obviously it's very serious because this will take some time to fix. Um, there's a knock-on effect in terms of restoring systems. And then, you know, for all the uh, financial companies, you know, trying to find lost data, um, you know, stock markets went down. How much that affected um, economies and lost money is, is really an interesting question. So I think that, yeah, the financial implications of this are very severe and ongoing. Uh, it, they will recover, uh, but you know it should be a warning for the future. An absolute warning for the future indeed, and we're being assured that it's not a cyber attack. However, it's opening the door to potential attacks. We haven't heard anything yet, but um, certainly leaving us very vulnerable. What do we need to learn from this, Malcolm? Look, I think we need to recognise, obviously, this is not a cyber attack, but if it were, uh, if something like this were to happen in the future, which was a cyber attack, particularly if it was done by a malicious actor, uh, such as a hostile state, um, they would build into their attack um, uh, actions to be taken by the by Australia and others to try and counter that attack, and they would be hitting us with successive waves of cyber attacks. So rather than just being down for 24 hours, you could see the entire system of a country, you know, the banking, the transportation, the air, airlines and what have you, down for weeks at an, on end because the adversary would be continually attacking our networks and bringing down and countering our measures that we're taking to try and restore services. All right, let's turn to a different topic. And uh, President Trump, he gave the, the longest speech, as we believe, in, uh, in history for the Republicans. It was about 93 minutes long at the RNC, the final day there. And uh, what are your thoughts on it? Because he did say that America will be united like never before. What's your analysis on his speech? Look, I think actually it was a bit of a wasted opportunity for him in the sense that you have a situation where the Democrats are imploding, uh, Biden refusing to step aside, uh, no clear path uh, if he does step aside as to who replaces him. And Trump uh, got up there and for the first, I, I heard most of the speech, for the first uh, 20, 30 minutes, it seemed quite reasonable, but then he veered off script and basically lent into this rambling, incoherent um, uh, sort of monologue that just went on and on and on. And I think that actually it was a, a wasted opportunity uh, for Trump in that sense. Let's see what happens in the coming weeks of the election campaign, particularly in regards to Biden. But um, I think that, you know, Trump obviously still has the advantage, has the lead. Um, going into the coming weeks. And I think the longer that Biden stays in the race, the worse it will get for the Democrats. But there's no clear path in, as to who replaces Biden if he does decide to step aside. So that in itself adds to the Democrats' woes. And it's really a case of how do the Republicans and Trump uh, exploit those advantages? Yeah, very interesting indeed, and uh, perhaps a, a you know talk of an open convention for the Democrats, and they they certainly seem a little bit chaotic, uh, some would say. But um, we're hearing reports, and there are only reports, of course, that um, Joe Biden may step down in the next twenty four to forty eight hours. So again, Malcolm, what do you see happening here? I mean, obviously the vice president is Kamala Harris, but um, what's her popularity, and how do you see this playing out? Well, Kamala Harris is not. Uh, well uh, thought of in many regards uh, in terms of she's not highly popular in the polls. Uh, so I think that you know, there's two options here uh, if Biden steps aside. The first option is that Biden basically designates Kamala Harris as his heir apparent uh, and she goes into the convention, she gets the, the nomination, but then she could still lose uh, to Donald Trump. The other option is that they try to bypass Kamala Harris because of her unpopularity in the polls. 
um, and have an open convention, but that would tear the Democrat Party apart because, in effect, what they're saying is we're going to ignore um, Vice President Harris um, and go with another candidate. Uh, and for a lot of the uh, various different groups within the Democrat Party, that would be an anathema. Uh, so I think that either way, uh, the path ahead for the Democrats is not looking uh, positive. I think chances are highly likely that uh, Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. Uh, and I think that the real risk is that once he's in, um, he will have also control of the Congress, which means that he will be able to you know, basically introduce his um, his agenda without any sort of opposition whatsoever. Dr Malcolm Davis, thank you so much as always for your time and expertise. Thank you.